every time I do one of these videos, I think there's not going to be a lot to talk about. Unfortunately, or fortunately, there's a ton to talk about today. Fortunately, actually, because it's nothing bad. Today is the 19th of November. Welcome to the Blathercast Gaming News Discussion. We're going to talk a little bit about news. I'll run down the big events for today. And then in the end of this, for about the last 10 to 20 minutes, we'll break some of those down as well as some other elements into more of a podcast form and just give you my thoughts. But today we're going to be talking about James Bond. IO Interactive, the perfect meshing of chocolate and peanut butter. I cannot wait for that. Then we're going to talk about Dragon's Dogma leaking, which is something that in the last Blathercast, you may have noticed, I didn't bring up. I actually thought it wasn't happening because in those documents from the Capcom leak, that hadn't been in the list, but now it apparently is. I want to talk about DLSS, especially in Call of Duty and the huge improvements. And then we're going to finish this off with my live reaction, or my reaction at least, of Cyberpunk and The Last Nightwire, pretty much till we get the game. Bunch of people played it, previews are popping off. 16 hours, I think, for all of the journalists who got to go. Now, a lot of people ask, why is it that a YouTuber and a journalist uh, may have different uh, abilities to see some of these things? If you notice, at least from what I can tell, most of them are just doing written articles where they talk about it. And this does stop, let's say, somebody from taking a bunch of video and plopping it up there. You'll probably see mostly just the written form websites reporting on their time with this game. Let's begin. I want to say thanks to everybody. And remember, if you're subscribed, you can win an Xbox Series X as well as a PlayStation 5. I'll be giving those away next Friday on the ACG podcast, ACG on Twitch. You can also follow me on uh, Spotify and iTunes, ACG, the best ba gaming podcast. Let's start with DLSS. I'm going to give you a generic description in less than one minute. Pretend you have three different people. One is looking at a low-res screenshot of a game. The other has a native 4K screenshot of the game, and a person in between is able to tell the person who has a 1080p picture that the improvements they are making, the little bits of extra data they are making to fill out a 4K shot, which would actually be more pixels required, is looking closer and closer to the 4K. This goes back and forth millions of times until the 1080p picture looks close or equal to the 4K picture. And at that point, the AI says, good job, you're done. Now, DLSS is getting better and better. Call of Duty is what I want to talk about today. Call of Duty doesn't necessarily run poorly. It doesn't run poorly at all. In fact, for me, it's ran pretty well, whether it be console or PC. Video released a DLSS driver for this thing, and it doubles the frame rate. It's ridiculous. There's also a game called War Thunder, which it absolutely makes huge changes to that as well and increases the FPS. And what happens is this is basically sort of a middle ground. Instead of running at 4K, you're running at a lower resolution, but you're using the hardware on the card to sort of guess at different depths. If it's quality, super deep when it comes to its sampling and when it's performance, less deep. And you can get better performance than 4K with a little bit worse performance than 1080p. That's pretty much it. It's guessing, but it's doing it well. And it's using artificial intelligence to do it off-site prior to being loaded into the cards. Now, in the future, DLSS is supposed to be generic. There's ideas that DLSS will get smart enough and they'll be able to sort of come up with generic algorithms that will get you good performances. But right now, most of these are all being done off-site for specific games. we got Call of Duty, we got War Thunder, and we've got other ones, Control and some other ones as well. These are fantastic improvements. DLSS is a kill shot. I want to see other companies do this. AMD's got something that they're working on, but it's not necessarily like DLSS. Each one is going to do things in a different way. So don't get those mixed up because you may end up getting the quality at the end that you expect from one and not the other, but you may get more performance from another. It's just going to depend. Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, Microsoft themselves, and DirectX, everybody's working on this kind of system because it is intelligent. It's exciting, guys. This is awesome because I get it. We can watch videos, and we do this, where we zoom into 1,000 pixel magnification, and somebody's like, I can tell the color is slightly off. But for a lot of people, in fact, the majority of gamers, things like this are huge boons to the performance. They end up coming away from it thinking it looks at 4K or close to it, and they're able to get incredible performance. That's what matters. DLSS is fantastic. I'm super excited for that. But moving on, something I'm more excited for, Dragon's Dogma 2. So I talked about this. Capcom. They got a leak 
I don't want to put any info information up here about the leak. Information was on. I don't, don't want to put any of that up here because I don't feel that uh, we should celebrate this kind of thing. But it did get out and people were looking at the data. Now, originally, I couldn't find any data about Dragon's Dogman. I don't think anybody else did. However, some new data is apparently decrypted or leaked or found in here where a spreadsheet does indicate that in 2022, if we all get there, right? 2020 feels like it's been six years. But if we all get to 2022, a new Dragon's Dogma is coming. This is sort of, I guess I would say, lifted up when it comes to the chances of this being a real leak. When you look at the fact that Devil May Cry does not have a sequel in that listing. The reason why, of course, is because the same creator does both and had originally stated they wanted to do Dragon's Dogma or Devil May Cry, chose Devil May Cry. The fact that we see Dragon's Dogma now on the list, but not Devil May Cry, I think adds a little bit of credence to this and I'll be happy about it regardless. That's what matters is that if I get a Dragon's Dogma, I'm going to be happy because as we all know, they're masterworks all. You just can't go wrong. Dragon's Dogma is fantastic. It's one of my favorite games and playing it on the new systems, playing it with, you know, the auto HDR is awesome, but we all want a sequel. You know, there's mods for it on the PC, which are great. I feel that Dragon's Dogma offered a lot of differences. It was like a middle ground for Dark Souls, right? It wasn't so action packed that it was just easy, but it also had some difficulty and it was right in the middle between, let's say, a Dark Souls and something that was just over the top consistent explosions or spells like a Skyrim. And that is one of those perfect points, one of those soft points of entry into gaming that I love. But that's not all. You guys would probably feel that I was remiss if I didn't give an update on my PS5. Uh, short update. PS5 had some issues with this new one. Nowhere near as bad as the original. I'm not necessarily happy with it. That's life. There was a firmware update that did fix some stuff. Unfortunately, if you look at forums, various places, there are people getting particular errors that I'm getting, but I'm just con basically cross my fingers and hope that continues to work. I've been having a great time jumping into various games on both of the systems, checking out the 3D audio. And I do want to say that the 3D audio is not necessarily stellar on either. I guess it would might actually in a weird way be a little better on the Xbox just because they still have Atmos and DTX uh, through HDMI where PS5 doesn't. But I think Call of Duty does a pretty good job. I tested Call of Duty's audio. I'm really excited for that. I'd like to know what you guys are playing on these because for most of us, the ability to get a PS5 was there. Whether you did or not, I'm saying that it's, it is, I think it's now as of now sort of in most locations. Even if you didn't get one, it's at least legal to get one there. I'd like to know what you think. PS5, Xbox, are you enjoying your time with them? It's a good time to be a gamer when it comes to that kind of thing. Grab your old game, boom, works better in either one of the systems. New games are coming out pretty much all the time. Here soon, Rising, Phoenix, what's it called? Gods and Monsters, Phoenix Rising, whatever, that's coming out soon. And of course, Cyberpunk, which is the next thing we're going to talk about. So while the Nightwire is pretty much live here at, as of right now, one of the things I want to talk about just for a second is that it was pretty interesting to see them show the Xbox Series X versus the Xbox X and some comparisons there. And we got to see some console footage and it looked better than I think a lot of people assumed or were worried about. I've always believed that the old, oh, the old console slowed us down wasn't necessarily exactly the truth and was used as a bit of a Trojan horse here by the company because we already knew they'd been working on those for a long time and had actually showed it off and people had seen it. And so the idea that it was like suddenly they were having issues, not necessarily something I believed fully, but it doesn't really matter because in the end, none of us know what's going on behind the scenes. And what we've got is we've got console footage of the game, We've got people reporting 16, 14, 16 hours with the game and what they think and have come away fairly positive, though admittedly, this is something that I did speak about during Valhalla and some other games where the previews don't necessarily equal the reviews because of how you enter it, Yakuza, for instance, and some others and where you enter it and what level. But what we're looking at is Cyberpunk finally coming out. I think we see this, we see these videos of people saying 16, 14 hours playing. The reason why you're seeing this, guys, is because because they want to show that this game is actually coming out. Now, whether it comes out and it's fully developed or whether, you know, some areas have been snipped off and they sort of add those as they continue to patch, we won't know. But what we've got is Cyberpunk finally coming out. This is a game that was announced almost a decade ago, a couple years less than a decade, but still decades closer than like five to this. It is a title that a lot of people are excited for, a title a lot of people hope runs well, a title that most people hope has DLSS, obviously. It's been so long in coming. I just got to remind you, man, make sure when you get this, realize that intentions, ideas, those aren't the reality. 
what you get is the reality. And that'll break us into the podcast time. So as I said, I'm trying to keep these about 20 minutes, first 10 minutes news, next uh, 10 probably podcast stuff. Let's talk about some things. Thank you to everybody who subscribed. There's been a bunch of people subscribing, some of course just for giving away the PS5 and the Xbox. Hey, you know, I get it. Looking at the data that we have now, the different things. Uh, one of the things I do want to talk about, I want to return just a bit to James Bond, IO Interactive. I've been such a big fan of Hitman such a huge fan. And I think that one of the things about Hitman is, is it never really goes bombastic. Now, just bear with me for a second. Hitman has always been about the stealth, right? It's always been about the social stealth. And you can go bombastic usually in setting up enemies, especially in number two and one. I think that they really elevated that to an extreme that a lot of people were fascinated to explore and interact with. They've never really been able to go huge. Bonds are usually known for going huge at some point, right? At some point, there's some huge action hero moment. And Hitman, that is not Agent 47's shtick. His shtick has never been over the top. His shtick has always been get in and get out quietly. Now, we know James Bond isn't that way because this is such a dumbass. He walks into every single place he goes to and announces who he is. Everybody knows this dude, right? It would be like a Kardashian coming in and being like, I'm a social influencer. People would be like, we know, dude. And IO Interactive, I think, is perfect. They've got the Hitman stuff, but they can also do some action. We're going to see all this meld together in James Bond. James Bond is also coming up on a pretty big change here. We know that Daniel Craig is basically stepping away. This will be his last one. So we don't know exactly how they're going to handle it. They say it's basically a brand new origin story for James Bond. but I And I get that, but I'm wondering also if it will be in some way an origin story relating, by the way, to the James Bond that's coming. And we don't know, right? We will never know. James Bond games have been hit and miss. Some have been excellent. Some have not been so good. I'm excited for a James Bond game. I think that IO needs some success as well. Hitman came out, and you could tell, especially with Hitman 2, that they had to cut some corners when it came to the amount of money they had and the amount of resources they spent. You just could. I think this is something where James Bond, they have an IP that they can get some people behind them and say, hey, listen, if you support us, we can go above and beyond what you've seen from us before. And I was talking a little bit about cyberpunk. I do want to extend the cyberpunk discussion to games as a whole just for a moment, because we had this discussion in the Discord, and I think this is a good podcast moment for the next five or six minutes to just talk about it, see what you guys think. So feel free in the discussion, in the comments, or if you're in our Discord to pop off when you read this, or in Patreon itself. So a lot of times this comes up where somebody's like, hey, man, this game's not as good as Final Fantasy VII, right? This game's not as good as Fantasy Star 1. This game's not as good as Space Harrier. This game's not as good as Zelda, the original. And I am of two minds on this. The first I always say is, dude, seriously, people are fucking all the time. You have no clue how old this person is. They can't compare those. Additionally, though, if their experiences were with those, whether they returned to them at an age, uh, you know, later on and they enjoyed it, or maybe they you know, are still young, but somebody told them to play it and they still like those original games. When you're looking at titles and when you're judging them, you are judging them against all of the stuff prior. My joke about this is always the book of woe from Warhammer. Warhammer, the dwarves have a book of woe. This is like your book of enemies, right? And in a way, most games are 100 versus one. It's one game, but you compare it against the top 100 memories you have from other games. Let's even pare that down. So let's cut this all the way down to 20. Let's say you have 20 great memories per genre and a new title is coming out and you want to look at that title and you want to decide, is it worthy? Now, this is something I deal with a lot when people are listening to reviews. They'll be like, I can't believe that five years ago you rated this game a buy and this game also a buy. And I'm like, listen, man, the category doesn't stop other games from injecting themselves into the category. That would be fucking ridiculous, right? That would be absolutely asinine. Now, people will still say it and they're asinine but you get my drift. When you're looking at this and you're verifying a game versus others and you get this game home, let's talk about Valhalla. Valhalla is a perfect example. Valhalla is a perfect storm of multiple weirdnesses all happening at once. Vikings currently being quite popular when it comes to TV shows. That's one thing, right? Vikings having not been visited in Assassin's Creed for the most part. That's another thing. Number two, cyberpunk being delayed. That's a huge thing. And when we ran a poll, about 90% of people who played and liked Valhalla, who played and liked Valhalla, would not have played it if cyberpunk had come out. Now, I want to bring this up, not as a ding to Valhalla, but as a remembrance to the time and place in which you buy a game and how that can affect things. Valhalla, for instance. Valhalla is what I would consider to be a enjoyable game, but not necessarily super complex in anything. It's got a big uh, skill list, but that skill list is really a lot of plus 5% and then suddenly a special skill. 
However, when you have Cyberpunk leave, you have this game that in a way is chewable, right? You look at it and you're like, hey, it's Valhalla's and it's it's Vikings and all the positives I mentioned start to outweigh, you know, some of the negatives, whether it be bugs, let's say, whether it be because it's just long and maybe you're thinking, hey, I don't necessarily know if I want to play all this. A game like Odyssey, a game like Origins, a game like the Assassin's Creed prior, and certainly Valhalla, many times you'll hear people say they're too big. There's a subtle psychological event occurring here, which I find fascinating and I wanted to discuss with you guys. What's fascinating to me is this is a game which has, for many people, an artificial close-off. What do I mean by that? When Cyberpunk comes out, they'll move to it. And they know that. And there is an artificial closing off of time allotted to Valhalla. And I think in a way that's amazing. It's awesome. It's the confluences of multiple things. And you could say it's a lot like people looking up at a full moon. They have, you know, a, a baby birth that goes bad and they're like, full moons are bad. I don't necessarily believe that. I think what happens is you have multiple things that have occurred in a game that is fit in, by the way, Valhalla being their number one game released so far ever in the Assassin's Creed franchise, which admittedly, though I had issues with it, I don't actually see why that's not true or see why that's not in some way the way the game should be responded to. I didn't necessarily love the title, but there isn't anything about it that pushes you away. There's a lot of things about it that pull you in. It's a little bit more shallow than some of the others. They've stated that the side stories, and, and I told you guys about this, the side stories aren't necessarily in there as much. It's the world events, and they've changed. They're even shorter. All these influences, all of these changes, whether subtle or where they're supremely depthy, which is pretty rare because there's not a ton of them, have allowed for this game to do well in this particular time frame. A couple months ago, every single person was like, Valhalla is in deep shit, including myself. And instead, everything working together as well as what they've put together has turned into a game that for many people, they feel it's their game of the year. Is it truly their game of the year? And I'm certainly not gonna question somebody's belief it is or isn't. It doesn't really matter, but it's on their list. As we move forward in gaming and you look at how the entire world has changed and you look how developers are releasing games, when they're releasing them to what systems, this is a interesting time. It's an amazing facet of the discussion that goes on in games. And I think despite my rating, despite anybody's rating of a title, it also allows for this grayness in that discussion that comes up that is probably the best part of gaming for me. So that's it. I tried to wrap these things up 20 minutes and like 15 seconds right now. I want to say thank you to everybody. If you are not subscribed, make sure you do so. Remember, subscribing, uh, or if you are a subscriber, you will also be entered to win PS5 slash Xbox Series X that we're giving away next Friday. Check out the ACG on Twitch, Twitch channel. 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time every Friday. We show up, we talk about games, we discuss things. I would love for you to come over there and join up with us, discuss games with us. I know that you have a lot of podcasts, but I guarantee you there's a high chance that if you listen to us once, you'll stick around. We have some long-term fans, which is pretty crazy. Also, Spotify, iTunes, you can follow me there. Make sure to spread the video like this. If you like these news bits, I would love for you to comment that you do. It really does help for me to identify what people are liking about the channel. That's it for me. Stay safe. Keep gaming. Peace out.